and typed in here FTP colon slash slash CISSQL dot Lorraine CCC dot EDU slash CISS two six eight. I put in my password. Now this folder I have permissions to, other members of the class don't, uh, but you have uh, permissions to your own uh, personal folders. Log on here. And then I can go into this lecture folder and I can just drag over that file from my local machine to the CISS SQL web server. Alright, there we go. Now, how do I access it? Well, again, I don't type in localhost now because it's no longer just on my server. It's actually on the real web server. So I type in cissql.lorraincc.edu, right, because that's the name of this web server. It's then in a folder called CISS268. It's then in a folder called lecture. So I can go in and type that up here. And what did I do? I got the same thing earlier today, but then I went to Firefox ah. and I saw the actual real. I sign. typed in the wrong address. There we go. And there's our web page. And it tells me what browser I'm in. I can pull up the same page on a different browser. Let's bring up uh, Mozilla. And by accessing the same page, I get different information. Right? Why? Because a portion of this page is generated dynamically is generated via the PHP script. And lastly, if I bring this up on a mobile device, it will show me the information about the user agent on this. that we're running a version of Android and so on and so forth. All right. So, one page generates three different kinds of output. Why? Because there's code in here that makes it dynamic. There's code in here that looks at the request parameters and, and, and stores the user agent and displays it on the screen. All right. Everyone with me up to here or are there any questions? into a folder and he 
he just gushes over PHP, loading them up for him versus you know someone hard coding one picture at a time on HTML to show them on a website. So this examples that we have so far pretty much like it shows a different background picture and whatnot. But can you literally can engineer suck the entire contents of an entire folder, even if it's tons of old photos? Uh, I, I yes. yes. The idea is this, and again, we're not going to go into, and again, keep, do keep in mind this isn't a PHP class, but just so that you understand sure. what it is in principle, the key is what we have here between this tag and this PHP tag, okay. this can get as complicated as you want. So in that block of instructions, I could look for a uh, look for get a directory listing, get a list of all the files in a directory. I could write a loop that would say for every file, create an image tag, and use from the image tag the uh, the, the the name of the file to to finish out the image tag. And so on. So the idea is, is the logic in here. This is this is trivial logic. All right, this isn't even logic. It's just outputting the variable. But the fun starts when you get more familiar with the PHP. You can put any code in here to generate HTML. What is often done? That's one example you gave of a photographer uploading a bunch of pictures, and then you know they don't have to write an HTML uh, page to do that. Um, uh, another example would be that you could do a database query. You could pull values from a database and display them in here. Pull the different, instead of pulling data elements out from the user agent, you could pull data elements out of a database query and use those to construct an HTML page. All right? So in essence, what you're writing here is you write some HTML, but you write the code that writes the rest of the HTML, the dynamic HTML. And really, that is, is virtually unlimited. Oh, okay. All right? so you can really yeah, any sort of server, you know, if you look at any website of any significance, you know, um, you know whether it be Facebook, eBay, um, uh, Google, Amazon, they're all done using server-side scripting because no one is going in and putting all those pages out there. All right? They have a page, all right? They have a page or a script that has logic in it to generate all the different permutations of it. Okay, so now, now um, we want to take this a little further and really do what we were aiming to do, and that is to redirect to two different pages. All right, depending on what that user, user agent is. We want to redirect it to two different pages. So what I'm going to do, I already have the finished version, so I'm going to borrow that. a little bit and 
this is what we have. All right. So what do we have? I have my two pages now. I put in my folder the two pages Oops. on my local server. I have index.php and mobile.php. These are meant to be two versions of the same page. All right. A, uh, a mobile version and a um, desktop version. Now I could put them in different folders or I could do a lot of different stuff, but for now I'll just keep them in the same folder and give them different names. Now, what's the difference between this and what I had before? The difference is, is this line of code here between uh, 5 and 10, between lines 5 through 10. And this one is the one that does the magic. All right, because we're not simply grabbing and displaying the user agent anymore. We're grabbing the user agent and we're looking to see if that user agent meets some criteria. All right, this is where, again, it's not important that you memorize a statement like this or it's not important uh, that you know how to create it. I pulled it from that location, all right, and this works. This identifies whether um, this is a mobile page or a desktop page. All right. Or, or I'm sorry, whether the user agent is a, is a mobile or a desktop. Now, what we need to know about if statements in PHP is if statements in PHP, like in any other programming language, can either be true or false. All right. And we can specify what to do if they're true. And optionally, we can specify what we want to do if it's false. All right? So in this case, I'm looking at the user agent. If this if statement is true, that means I'm not on a full version of the site. I'm not, I'm not viewing it via the desktop browser. I'm on the mobile version of the site. And therefore, I want to be redirected to the mobile version. This line of code in line 8 is what redirects it to the mobile version. Essentially, we're rewriting the header of the request. We're saying, hey, I don't want to go to the page that they said they wanted to go to. I want to take them to this page that's called mobile.php. And mobile.php is the name of the other page. All right? I then, for good measure, I set a variable that says, yes, we're on the full page. If it makes it to line 11, we're not viewing it with a mobile browser, right? Because if we were viewing it with a mobile browser, line 8 would have sent us on our way. It would have canceled loading the rest of the page, and it would start loading mobile.php. So, with these two pages, Again, one of two things happens. The user requests index.php. The PHP code examines the user, grabs the user agent, examines it. If this if statement is true, that means that the user is using a mobile browser. In which case, we don't continue loading this page. We send the user to a different separate page. So now they're going to a separate page. So the rest of this page doesn't happen for mobile users. At line 8, we're out of there. We're on to mobile.php. And that page will display. If, however, the if statement is false, we don't send them to mobile.php. Instead, we let the page load as we intended it to, as they intended it to, the full version of the page. And that's where the rest of the page comes in. Now, one catch with this, if you will, is that this header redirect has to take place before we send any HTML to the browser. So I couldn't put this code down here somewhere. I couldn't move that, I couldn't rearrange this. This has to be at the beginning of the page. All right? Because once I've started sending HTML, it's too late to, to back out then. It's too late to redirect them to uh, another page at that point. 
So this block of code needs to be at the top of the page, which sort of makes sense anyhow, right? If you're loading two different pages, you want to know right off the bat, do I send them to the mobile page? Do I stay on this page? So let's see this in action. I'm going to save all these pages. All right, already saved. I'm going to pull up the localhost version. Am I on a mobile browser? No, I'm not. Therefore, will this if statement be true? No, it won't. So we won't redirect them to mobile.php page. We'll just continue and display the rest of this page. So sure enough, we didn't redirect. We're still on index.php, and we display the full page. Now, here's where, this is why I needed to get you all an account on the web server, on the CIS SQL web server, because how do I attach this to this machine's web server? Well, it's not really set up to do that, all right? Uh, I can type in localhost here. Right? Because localhost is whatever machine you're on. This isn't this machine. So localhost, if I were to type that in, it's not going to know to use this machine. All right? So I have to put it on a web server that's available. So therefore, we're using the CIS SQL server. So if I go and I move both these files up to the, the CIS SQL web server, So I'll copy both those over. It warns me that, do I want to replace? Yes, I do. Now if I go via my mobile device, all right, I went and just hit refresh. There we go. It goes to the mobile site. Now there's no styling at all on this, so it just, it, right now, so it just uh, looks like that. All right? If we look closely at the address bar, you'll see the address bar now says mobile.php. It redirected it. It effectively hijacked the request. All right? It said, hey, I noticed you're on a mobile browser. You don't want index.php. You want mobile.php. Whereas if I pull it up on a desktop browser, It says, hey, you're not on a mobile browser, all right? So therefore, don't hijack the request, all right? And just display the page as I wanted them to. All right, questions about this? We have our two pages. Right now, there's really not much to these pages, all right? There's just some HTML, all right? Um, but we certainly can use everything we've learned from the previous classes to make some pages that look better on a mobile and other pages that look better in a desktop environment. We can apply the same first, mobile first ideology to say, I'm going to make this, I'm going to optimize this page for Bigger browser windows, I'm going to optimize it for smaller mobile ones. Now, one little catch. Browsers can misidentify themselves. All right? And that's why 
we don't want to throw out all of those great ideas we had uh, as far as mobile first and, and responsive sites and so on. Because even if the page mis if the page misidentifies itself and they're actually on a mobile browser, we should try to apply, again, the mobile first design philosophy to make it work right. All right? The other catch, and this isn't really a catch, but I suppose it is, is there may be some users that want to use the full version regardless of the fact that they're on a mobile device. All right? Remember, typically with a mobile version, we are going to um, we are going to um, limit what they can access. We're going to, we're going to we're identifying that they have different goals <coughs> when they're using a mobile device to browse their website as opposed to using a desktop browser. And because they have different goals, um, we're going to give them less stuff. We're going to narrow it down, all right, and, and give them the things that we think. We could be wrong about that. We could be right about 95% of our users, but there might be a handful of users that need something that wasn't defined as being on our mobile site. Well, one nice thing to do then is to give them the option of going to the full version of the site. All right? And we'll, we'll look at that uh, as well. The other thing, two other things to talk about. One is... There might be content that we want to share between pages. All right. Remember I said before, if we have two pages, if we're not careful, that could mean twice the work. And if something changes, we have to update it in two places. Well, that's only if we don't do a good job of planning. Because if we're effective in planning it, we can make it so that making two pages isn't twice the work. It might be somewhere between doing one page and doing two pages. Like maybe it's like doing one and a half times the work. So we can mitigate some of those troubles a little bit. In some cases, we might want to kind of show the same data, right? We might want to show essentially the same content with maybe a little bit of tweaks depending on whether it is the full version or the mobile version. And we'll see how to do that too. All right, um, that's what we'll go over over the next, uh, the remaining part of class today and going uh, into Wednesday, all right? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some style sheets back to this, all right? So I'm going to go into my completed version. And I'm going to put back the style sheets. Now notice what I've done. All right. I have copied over the style sheet to my lecture folder. So now I have index mobile and I have two style sheets, base and full. Base being sort of the baseline, basic, mobile first sort of style sheet, and full being the full blown amount of desktop style sheet sheet. So if we look at the code, as you can imagine. The mobile page has a link to the base style sheet. All right, the basic, the, the, the starting point style sheet. All right. Do you suppose there's a media query on this? There could be. 
but in this particular case, I don't. Why not? Well, because I'm pretty sure we're on a mobile device at this point. I don't really have to ask, are we on a mobile device? I can assume that if I got redirected to this page, they're on a mobile device. Okay? So I don't really have to put a mobile, uh, uh, a media query for a mobile device. Now, for the full site, I have the two style sheets. And we've done the mobile, follow the mobile first philosophy. I put the first off in there, the base style sheet. So we get everything from that common style sheet. So both of these are sharing that base style sheet. I then extend this by adding the full style sheet to the desktop version. And I do a media query for that. All right. Why do I do a media query here but not in the other one? Well, if a mobile device has fooled the server into thinking that it's not a mobile device, I still want to make this page as good as I possibly can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, exclude um, I'm going to I'm going to exclude the style sheets for the smaller size screens. So I write the media query only to apply this for the larger screens. In addition to that. If there's a mobile user that wants to deliberately go to the full version of the site, I still want to make the page look good for them. So I want to exclude the full style sheet. So, notice how this is mixing and matching the techniques we learned so far. All right? It's not like we can say, all right, we have a mobile page and a full page. So I don't have to do that responsive bit anymore. I don't have to do the mobile first design. I can just put one style sheet on one, one style sheet on the other. No, uh, because uh, user agents can be misidentified and because in some cases a mobile user may choose to go to the full version of the site, we will, um, we will, um, what I want to say, we will, um, create the style sheets in such a way that if a mobile user is viewing the full site, then they get a look that would work for them following the responsive web design techniques. Now, all right, let's save this. And I could go in and I could test this. on my local machine. There's the full site. There's the mobile site. <laughs> really doesn't look a lot different. Let's go in and at least make the style sheets a little bit different so that we can see something going on. IE. Ooh. Danger, danger. Why isn't my code working? Why am I not getting the background image on this when I go to the full version of the page? Because IE previous to IE9 does not recognize what? Media queries. Where that page comes in, and we'll, we'll, we'll go and we'll put that in. I'm not going to do that quite now. 